mystical geology students. <clears throat> um, this is the first lecture for June the 15th, Monday. And you all have taken the first final, the first exam, I, and I graded those, and I sent you your grades. I also graded your lab quizzes. Um, some, uh, some, uh, some of you are doing really good on the labs, and others are having some problems. Uh, if I can make a suggestion, you got to really read the instructions carefully, and not fall behind. Um, that's just. We got four quarters in a football game. You got one quarter done, and um, let's let's go. Um, let's get started. Chapter number four. <coughs> Excuse me. Chapter number four is igneous processes and volcanoes. I think you're going to find this chapter quite interesting. Um, your lab is uh, that I'm going to uh, send you, which will be due on Tuesday, June the sixteenth, is going to be on igne about igneous rocks. And so, therefore, that ties in with this chapter, Igneous Processes and Volcanoes. I, I'm, uh, so, we're going over this chapter for two reasons. First reason is to get ready for the next test. And that'll be about, oh, maybe 13 days from now or something like that. And also, we want to get ready for the Igneous Rocks Lab. Um, some of you all did really well on the minerals, and others had some more problems. Um, when when you do rocks, sedimentary rocks, igneous or metamorphic, you got to know the textures. You have to know the textures. I'm going to try and give you as many hints as I can, and if you pay real close attention, I'm I'm sure you'll do quite well. Um, igneous processes and volcanoes. What are igneous rocks? Well. Igneous rocks are rocks that were a one-time molten. They were liquid. They were heated to such high temperatures that the rock was a liquid. Liquid rock underground is called magma, M-A-G-M-A. -M -A. The mag if the magma reaches the surface of the earth, we call it lava, L-A-V-A. There is no difference between magma and lava, except for the magma is liquid rock underground, and lava is liquid rock that makes it to the surface. When lava erupts onto the surface, it erupts into volcanoes. I'm not sure. I I haven't really uh, gotten to know you as people because um, I'm teaching this class this class online, but I'm. I'm, get, I'm guessing that probably most of you are from Tennessee and Kentucky or from east of the Mississippi. So you probably haven't experienced any volcanoes. But there are large parts of the world that, that experience a lot of volcanism and vo active volcanoes are part of their everyday lives. Especially around the edges of the Pacific Ocean and the Mediterranean. This is a town called Pompeii in Italy. I hope you get to visit this place sometime. I, I love to travel. Uh, one, of the, one of the countries I haven't been to is Italy, but my mother uh, has, been to, has been there many times to Italy since she's an artist. And um, my father took her there many times and paid for it because he wanted to make her happy. Anyway, they 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 took a lot of photographs of the of Pompeii. I hope you get to see it. Uh, back in seventy nine A.D., there was a massive volcanic eruption from Mount Vesuvius, and it buried the town of Pompeii. That's interesting for a lot of different reasons. Geologically, it's interesting because uh, why do why do we get violent volcanoes like Mount Vesuvius in the Mediterranean or violent volcanoes in Mount St. Helens, the one that erupted back in 1980, for example, or Mount Katmai in 1912 in Alaska? 
why do we get these violent volcanoes? I'll tell you the reason right now. Um, kind of spoil the story a little bit. Uh, violent vol volcanism occurs at subduction zones. We'll talk about why later. Or keep that in mind. Violent volcanoes occur at subduction zones. Subduction zones occur in the Mediterranean and on the edges of the Pacific Ocean in the Ring of Fire. But uh, Mount, uh, this um, Pompeii is also interesting from a historical perspective because um, when you read about the Roman Empire, you read about uh, these various emperors and, for example, um, uh, the invasion of Germany by the Romans with three legions and them getting wiped out in the Rhine, Rhineland area and what happened to them or C Julius Caesar getting stabbed outside the Senate or um, the uh, but you don't you read about these great people but uh, in Roman history but you don't really learn about everyday Roman middle class life well this is one of the few places on planet earth where you can um, see how the average Roman lived. Their artwork, all their belongings are left behind. Um, and it all came to be because of this violent volcanic eruption. Let me show you something here. Um, Pompeii. So Italy's got to be a place that you would go. Um, I've been to a, a lot of different countries with my family when I was a child or with girlfriends in the past or ex-wives in the past and <laughs> seen a lot of interesting things. Anyway, uh, if you if you take a look here, you can see that the people were frozen in uh, and preserved in ash, volcanic ash. Volcanic ash is associated with these violent volcanoes. You see all these different people preserved in the ash. Quite interesting. Whatever you were doing when you died, you were preserved in ash. They, they they have one. They even have an X-rated section, because <clears throat> whatever you were doing, you were preserved as. And my dad was kind of thought that was interesting. Anyway, um, so the next thing you want to learn about is this. Imagine deep under the earth, it's hot, right? Because of radioactive isotope decay producing heat. Well, the deeper you go in the earth, the hotter it gets. And if you go deep enough, you're going to make magma, liquid rock. And temperatures are so high down there. We're talking anywhere from 600 to 1300 degrees Celsius. About 1000 to 2000 Fahrenheit. To melt rock. That, ro that, ma that liquid rock underground is called magma. M-A-G-M-A. -A. And it's going to be buoyant. Less dense. So it's going to rise due to it being less dense than the surrounding solid rock. It's going to rise. When, if that magma reaches the surface, we call it lava. We already talked about that. Well, there's two, ladies and gentlemen, two kinds of, two kinds of igneous rocks. We have Pluton. Let me write it down because this is so important. And you need to be able to always think when you're looking at an igneous, igneous rock, um, what type of igneous rock is it? Two kinds. Plu we have plutonic igneous rocks, and we have volcanic igneous rocks. Plutonic igneous rocks cool from magma, and they cool underground. Imagine magma underground just cooling underground. That's a plutonic rock. But if the magma erupts onto the surface of the earth in lava and ash, we call it a volcanic igneous rock. See the difference? 
And the easy way to remember that is um, Pluto is the god of the underground in Roman in the Roman culture. So it's a rock that cooled underground. And volcanoes erupt on the surface of the earth. How are we going to tell? And, and one of the things you want to do in the lab is you want to be, and you will be able to do this if you pay attention. Look at that rock and figure out, is it pl plutonic or volcanic just by looking at it? There's a way to do it. And it has to do with the size of the crystals in the rock. The size of the crystals in the rock. If it cools as a magma deep under the earth, then the crystals will grow quite large. Why? Because if a magma cools underground where it's hotter, it's going to cool slower, allowing for the crystals to become large, large enough to see with the naked eye. So remember this when you're doing your igneous rocks lab. If that igneous rock has crystals that are visible to the naked eye, it is a plutonic rock. If the crystals are too small to see with the naked eye, you can't make out the individual crystals. You can tell it's made of little crystals, but they're too small to see with the naked eye. You need a magnifying glass to see the crystals. Then it's a volcanic rock. Or if it's made of some, a glass, it's a volcanic rock. Glass is not, uh, is not a mineral. And I'll talk about why that is later. But some volcanic rocks are made of glass, but most are made of tiny little crystals too small to see with the naked eye. So, first thing you want to do when you look at an igneous rock, first thing you want to do when you look at an igneous rock is figure out your goal in the back of your mind. You want to figure out, is this a plutonic rock or a volcanic rock? rock? Can I see the crystals? Oh yes, I can see the crystals. They're big. They're big enough to see with my eyes. It's plutonic. They're too small and I can't see the crystals. It's volcanic. That simple. Now the second thing you want to do when you look at an igneous rock is determine its color. Now the color of igneous rocks is kind of different than the way you might think about color. This is sofa cushion is green. My shirt is red. You know, that's not, those aren't igneous colors. We're going to divide the colors into four types. Ultramafic, mafic, intermediate, and felsic. You're, you're, you're probably thinking to yourself, I've never heard of these words before, or intermediate you heard of, but how, how, uh, in terms of color. Well, when, you're, when you talk about igneous rocks, you always want to put it into one of these four colors. And I'll tell you how uh, um, an easy way to think about it. Mafic means dark in color. Felsic means light in color. Intermediate means in between in color. Ultra mafic means ultra dark. But geology, uh, and these words are only used for igneous rocks. So you don't say mafic sedimentary rocks or minimal. They're only for igneous rocks. Um, and the next peculiar thing, and I, it really is peculiar to some people, is that for igneous rocks, the darkest color is not black or dark gray. It is green. Green is the darkest color. Remember that. So a light green is darker than a than black or dark gray. Green is the darkest color. The lightest color is not in white or light gray. It is pink. So a dark pink rock is the is lighter than a white rock or a light gray rock. If you can remember that, then the rest of this becomes simple. Well, ultramafic rocks, what color do you think they're going to be since they're ultra dark? They're going to be green in color. 
Mafic rocks are going to be black to dark gray in color. Felsic rocks are going to be what color? What's the lightest color for igneous rocks? Pink. Intermediate rocks can be any in-between color, like a medium gray to a to a, even white would be intermediate. Or a mineral that contains dark and light minerals mixed together is intermediate as well. So the first thing you want to do, your first job when you pick up that igneous rock, is it ultramafic, mafic, intermediate, or felsic? Don't worry, I'm going to show you some pictures and we'll, we'll figure that one out. The next thing you want to figure out when you're looking at igneous rocks is the texture of the igneous rocks. And there are a bunch of them. First one you want to remember is phanaritic texture, then aphanitic texture, then a porphyritic texture, then a vesicular tex texture. Vesicular, I spelled that wrong. Vesicular texture, and then a glassy texture. Okay, I'm going to show you what these look like. A phaneritic texture means that all or almost all of the crystals in that igneous rock are visible to the naked eye. In layman's terms, a phaneritic igneous rock has big crystals. Let me show you one. See this rock here? You might have it in your house if you have enough money to, for your countertops. The best countertops you can get are granite countertops. Granite is phaneritic. All or almost all of the crystals, you can see the individual crystals, are visible to the naked eye. Granite is a phaneritic igneous rock because it has crystals that are visible to the naked eye. An aphanitic igneous rock is a rock with small crystals in it. You can see that this rock here, all or almost all of the crystals in this igneous rock are too small to see with the naked eye. You can still you see it has a crystalline appearance and you can see these crystals with the magnifying glass but they're too small to see with the naked eye this is called basalt this is a aphanitic igneous rock aphanitic igneous rock third texture is called a porphyritic texture what is a porphyritic texture well this igneous rock here has a porphyritic igneous texture See these light gray crystals here? Or maybe, actually, they're kind of whitish crystals here. See them? They are visible to the naked eye. But in, see the in-between crystals, which are this darker color? They are not visible to the naked eye. This is what a porphyritic texture is. It's a mixture of crystals that are visible to the naked eye, the big ones surrounded by smaller crystals that's called a porphyritic texture porphyritic texture um, okay you're also going to see this pegmatitic texture you're not going to get that in lab but uh, a pegmatitic texture is just a special type of um, phaneritic texture with very large crystals huge crystals in them and sometimes they can be they're inches to feet even feet long uh, a pegmatitic texture is just a, a phaneritic rock with very large crystals next texture is called a vesicular texture a vesicular texture vesicles if you go into webster's dictionary vesicles mean air bubbles so a rock that has air bubbles in it or vesicles see the air bubbles has a vesicular texture here's one here called scoria you'll get this in your lab box s-c-o-r-i-a scoria scoria 
is a dark colored igneous rock with a vesicular texture. In other words, it's a mafic rock with a vesicular texture. Here's another one. It's called pumice or pumice by some people. You might have seen this rock before. I still remember um, um, my ex-wife used to go to this place called uh, the extremely boring place to buy pumice called Bed Bath & Beyond. It's the most boring store in the entire world. I just had to sit there and wait. Anyway, it, <clears throat> that rock has a, it's a lighter colored vesicular rock, and that's pumice or pumice. The fifth texture you need to know about is a glassy texture. It looks like glass. Obsidian is has a glassy texture. It's made of glass. Not of mineral crystals, but of glass. Remember that if there's no mineral crystals in, in a rock, and it's made of, if a rock is made of glass, there are no mineral crystals in the rock. So a, tr a trick question when you go to UT is they'll ask you, what minerals are in this igneous rock? And the answer is none. It's made of glass. Anyway, those are the five textures you need to know. Phanaritic, aphanitic, porphyritic, vesicular, and glassy. So when you pick up your igneous rock, figure out what color it has. Ultramafic, mafic, intermediate, or felsic. Then figure out what texture it has. Phanaritic, aphanitic, porphyritic, vesicular, and glassy. If you can do those two things, and I know you can, you'll be able to name the igneous rock, you will be able to figure out is it plutonic or volcanic, and that's what the next video will be about.